Malawi is known as the warm heart of Africa. The people are generally hardworking, hospitable, and generous. Konzalendo, where the religious sisters of charity live, is situated in the Shiri Highlands in the southern region and is quite picturesque. Malawi is considered one of the poorest countries in the world, where survival is a daily challenge for the majority of people. There are numerous non-government organizations working in various areas of development and social welfare. The Religious Sisters of Charity are involved in development and pastoral ministry at Konzalendo and the 13 outstations in the parish since they came in 2013. Sister Maria Shawa highlights the background and the aims of Religious Sisters of Charity. Religious Sisters of Charity were founded in Ireland by Mother Mary Akinhead 200 years ago. Since then, uh, we have uh, foundations in uh, England, Scotland, Australia, America, Nigeria, and uh, we are now in Malawi. We came to Malawi on the 8th of October following an invitation by the Bishop of Chikwawa, Bishop Peter Msukua. Konzalendo is the center and it has 13 outstations where we are involved in development and pastoral ministry. Linus Mwadza travels eight kilometers every day to school in Konzalendo, even though there is a school nearer to her home. The reason she comes to Konzalendo is that this school has more facilities and has a more conducive learning environment, even though the school is in need of more classrooms. To provide a better learning environment for the children in the two local schools, the Sisters of Charity decided with the local community to assist in the construction of classrooms and good latrines. Two classrooms are almost complete at Nyalugwe and ten classrooms are in the process of construction at Konzalendo. Since 1994, we had one block, so two classes, that is. So we occupy two classes only. The th three classes are learning outside for all these years. I've been learning outside the trees. When it is raining, we have a very serious problem because all this, the outside learners come in the, 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 the two classrooms and there's a serious condition, condition and raining and uh, teaching doesn't go very well. So we are very happy and we appreciate this, thanking the sisters so very much. We teachers and everybody in the, in the area. Chief Nyalugwe is very grateful for the work the Religious Sisters of Charity have done towards the development of Nyalugwe School. We and our children are so happy and glad that the sisters have built this school because our children were not happy. With the state of this school, when the sisters indicated that they were willing to construct a school for us, we were so happy and within a month, we molded and burned bricks, and today here we are with the school and our dreams. Um, when we went to Nyalugwe to visit the school, we discovered there were over 600 pupils and they only had two classrooms. Many classes were taken outside. So we discussed with the, the um, PEA and then with the DEM in Tiolo, the district education manager, uh, and we said, that if possible we could construct a classroom block and they were very happy and they agreed and then we sourced funds. Mrs. Mwangiwa in Ilgogodogwa village used to travel a long distance to fetch water before the local well was rehabilitated by the sisters. The community is responsible 
for the maintenance of the well. Now she has water nearby and she cannot hide her excitement as she explains. We had had numerous challenges in accessing clean and potable water due to long distances, cholera outbreaks and drinking unsafe water. But today we are thankful to the sisters for providing us with clean and potable water. We're very happy. We're very happy to be associated with the people in, in the whole parish of Gonzalendo. And this is only one of many, many Malda pumps that we have repaired. They maintain it well, that they maintain it, because if they don't maintain it, it will go back into the same state as it was before. A gravity-fed water scheme was initiated in Kapota village to provide water for 200 families. This is now in operation and the people are showing their appreciation in song and dance. At first we used to draw water from the river and we could many times fall down with, with pearls on our heads. But now we've seen the hand of God working through the sisters, through this initiative. Of course we had doubts when they asked us to dig canals, but look now, we are happy and we can only ask God to bless them more. <laughs> Well, it has taken a long time, but we're all very happy that it has happened. Ioanni, this man here, was the one who came to us first representing the situation about water in the area. And we thought about boreholes and wells, but nothing seemed to work. So then they had a spring, Nagasenga Spring, and we thought maybe it could be harnessed to give water to the communities here. <coughs> so we went to Tiola Boma, to the Water Affairs Department, and spoke with the men there. And they came and spent a day surveying the area, and they said, yes, it is possible. So they made out a bill of quantities and a budget and everything for us, because we were going to pay for everything. The people, the community would do the work, but we would pay for for the piping, which is three miles. We, we bought three miles of piping. There are seven outlets, six the same as this one here. The other six are situated in various areas. So water is being supplied to 200 families. And I think everybody in the area is very happy. Now, I must congratulate Mr. Mandala and Ioanni for their hard work because they were there all the time and they saw to the end of everything. They were very responsible and committed and I congratulate them. So thank you. Youth constituted the highest percentage of the Malawian population and unemployment is equally the highest amongst this group. To empower the youth to become self-reliant, the sisters set up training programs in the carpentry and tailoring in different locations throughout the parish. Sister Rose Melingando explains the background of these training programs. Actually, when we came to Konzalendo, we, had, we saw oh, so many children or youth just walking around doing nothing. So we called for a workshop to find out why they were just moving around, in, they had nothing to do, and they told us that they had nothing to do, so uh, all they do is drinking and uh, fighting and all that. So we said, what would you like us to do for you? They said, if we, it was possible for, le for them to learn tailoring or carpentry, they would be very glad. So we thought about it and we said it's a good idea. We know somebody in England who is in the Lottery Club 
who gives machines, sewing machines and carpentry tools. So we wrote to him and he was willing to give us the tools. So that's how we started the groups. Frances Wilson is one of the trainee tailors and has this to say. The challenges were just too numerous to mention, like having nothing to do and lacking money, but having learned tailoring now, I'll be able to find some monies and help my family. Now I have hope to live for, and my prayer to the sisters is that they should continue doing this to many so as to alleviate the people's suffering. I say thank you to the sisters. Youth Fujifundo left school while in Standard 5 and is now learning carpentry and they had this to say. In the school in 2014. Due to lack of school fees, I dropped out from school while in Standard 5 and now I have been taught carpentry skills by the Sisters of Charity. I'm working hard so that I make the grade and be able to help my younger brothers finish their education. I can only manage to say thank you to the sisters as they continue to reach out to the less privileged like me. When we took that boy, he came and he had interviews with the Form 4s, but we felt that we should give him chance also to try. And he is an orphan. And if he was able to do carpentry, he would be able to help his family, to help his grandmother and father, who, whom he is staying with since he's an orphan. We are very, very happy because it shows the interest of the children, even though they drop out of school, they want to continue to do something else which might help them. Gift Makonda is also thankful to the Religious Sisters of Charity. I can only agree with my colleagues that the sisters should extend this good gesture to others. The instructors have their challenges, but for now, let us concentrate on the good side of life. Teaching now is not as difficult as before, though we have some slow learners who have difficulties in grasping concepts, but on a whole, all is well. There is a high rate of illiteracy in the area. So the sisters initiated adult literacy classes. Presently, there are 16 classes in the parish. This man tells how writing and reading can affect a person and consequently he expresses his gratitude for the adult literacy initiative. Do not underlet illiteracy challenges because you can easily be misguided and misled. You easily fail to comprehend the simple concepts which are useful in one's life. For example, once you know how to read and write, you can easily avoid danger. And this adult literacy school has really been an eye-opener, as we are now able to know what is wrong and right. Ellen Jusa is also very thankful for the adult literacy classes. This area can develop with the coming of the adult literacy school because it will enable us a chance to read and write and thereby carry out any business transaction. And we are grateful to the sisters. In Konzalendo Parish territory, there are 38 small Christian communities, and these are visited regularly by the sisters. Nora Ndipo explains the benefit of coming together to pray as a Christian community. The small Christian community gatherings do give me hope. And I do see my spiritual life grow, and this is the reason why I always make sure that I avail myself. It is encouraging to see us supporting each other in terms of need and happiness. Sister Maria Shaba explains further on the importance of Christian community life. Pastoral work is important because it strengthens their Christian faith. And uh, like a uh, small Christian community as we meet here, it's also part of pastoral work. 
in a small Christian community, it gives them a sense of belonging. And it is in a small Christian community where they do the corporal mercy of helping each other uh, when one is sick, when one has a funeral. Uh, also, not only when they have sorrow, but also a celebration like a wedding, uh, initiation. It all starts in Christian, a small Christian community. But also uh, spiritual mercy, works of spiritual mercy where the main purpose of a Christian community really is to share the word of God so that uh, before it is read on Sunday, they have already shared in their own small Christian communities because they read the reading of the following reading. So it is to strengthen their faith by sharing the word of God. That's the central part of the small Christian community. One of the ways of passing on the faith is through teaching catechism. Sister Maria is involved in this ministry every Saturday when children gather to be taught. I teach children catechism, introducing them to Christian way of life, because I think it is important at a tender age for children to know Christ and giving them Christian values which might help them to be better Christians and also to be better citizens of a country. This boy highlights how catechism lessons have benefited him. I learned about the sacraments and prayer of life, and these have helped me so much more in strengthening my day-to-day -day spiritual life. I don't quarrel or fight with my fellow youth because they have taught us the importance of the great commandment of loving one another. While Sister Maria is involved with the catechism classes, Sister Rosemary Ngando is chaplain to the Junior Lady of Mary, and this is what she says. My interest in this group started when I saw the Lady of Mary, the older people, and there were no youth, and they had nothing devotional. So I thought I must start the region of Mary so that we could have girls and boys who are interested in prayer and helping other people. Legio does help me in prayer life. I always bring along with me friends as I have done today. Five have joined me today and all we want is to see change in our spiritual life and cultivate deep love for Mother Mary and Mother of our Savior, Jesus. The sisters are also involved in the distribution of a Holy Communion to the sick and elderly in their own homes. This is a challenging ministry as many live in isolated areas and much walking is entailed in order to reach the villages. Selected members and leaders of the small Christian community accompany the sisters when they take the Eucharist to the elderly. Selina Jonas expresses her joy in receiving the Eucharist. I find it very difficult not to partake in the Holy Eucharist because I get used to this while well, still a girl more in a Catholic church. I become very blessed when I see the sisters coming here with the Eucharist to us, Edari. The love demonstrated by the sisters to us, the Edari is just great and marvelous. <laughs> and Sister Rosemary explains on the Eucharistic ministry. When we came here, the old people had no opportunity of receiving the Eucharist. And uh, most of them used to ask us, why can't you bring us the Eucharist? We said, no, we have to get permission from the bishop. And we tried a few times and the bishop said, no, they, they don't get confession and uh, so they can't uh, receive the Eucharist. So we persisted. We said, you know, these people can't walk and they are just in their homes. They need the Eucharist to help them, you know, to strengthen them. So in 2013, July, we got permission to start giving the Eucharist. 
and we are very happy because the people are very happy themselves to receive the Lord, to strengthen them, and uh, to live with the Lord in their hearts. Eric Magulu, the chairperson for the ward, expresses his gratitude for the Eucharist ministry initiative. We become very blessed with the Eucharistic ministry here in Mbawira, number one community. Because many here are old, blind, and have working difficulties. We are so glad to see how dedicated the sisters are to this ministry. This is quite encouraging to the Christian community in our area. Prayer sustains the sisters in their ministry, and prayer is an essential part of their daily life. At various times during the day, they come together to pray. At evening prayer, they give thanks to God for all he has done for them during the day. As for me, I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Ah!